Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. For this review we're going to return to a brewery that you've seen me review many many beers from before and this is one that I am very curious about because I have enjoyed the other beers that I've had from this brewery in this particular style bracket and it's been a couple of months since I've had one of these actually. So for this review then we are going to go up to Helsingborg once again, a very beautiful city in the kind of northwest corner of Skåne and we're having a look at another beer from Brewski Microbreggery. So this particular beer is called the Triple Nipple. It's a triple IPA coming in at 10% ABV and this is the second one that I've had in this particular style bracket from Brewski. The last one was the Triple Threat which was uh, you know really quite nice. It was a bit heavier in alcohol than this one. I think it was 11 or 13% I forget exactly but I think that was the most heavy, um, the heaviest IPA that I've had actually from Brewski in terms of alcohol but it turned out to be one of the best ones I've had actually I would say that about it my other favorite IPA from these guys of course was the uh, the Conan double IPA but they've not done that in a very very long time but yeah these guys are doing some really really interesting stuff recently it's been the pie series the billion of ices that I've been reviewing for you as well as the cake series the kind of pastry stouts so it's nice to go back to an IPA because this is where this brewery really made their name the the hazy IPAs and the kind of fruity IPAs as well the fever series of course is very well known throughout Europe these days so yeah only my second triple IPA from these guys and this one was released on the 1st of August 2020 through the local of Smoskalik the Sortiment in Sistembolaga here in Sweden so hopefully another good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well this is my third review from uh, Brewski for the month of August 2020 actually so yeah let's go for it guys so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski Microbreggery before you will definitely see more beers reviewed from these guys in the near future there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brewski Microbreggery once again then. So Brewski Microbreggery, as I've told you before, were founded back in 2014 and they're based in Helsingborg in the northwestern part of Skåne here in the very south of Sweden. A very nice city that I do recommend you check out if you get the chance. So the founders of this company are Marcus Jarmusson, Johan Brutzen, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglund and all of these guys were, in, were basically uh, inspired to get into brewing their own craft beers having tried the Amer American West Coast craft beers and those didn't really exist in Sweden at that point in time there was only a few, like very few breweries doing them back in the early kind of 2010s actually so Marcus was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer he is the main man behind the brewing in Brewski Microbreggery, um, but these beers were brewed at the Hoogenis Breggery and the original Brewski beers were produced up there as well, although all of their beers are now produced at their own brewery in the old train yard in Helsingborg to the south of the central station. And this brewery has the capacity to brew around 100,000 litres of beer per month from what I understand. Uh, a bit later, in 2016, having expanded gradually over the years. They started their own beer festival which is known as Brewskival. In the first year they had over 40 different brewers and this has continually expanded year on year. I went there for the first time in 2017 and I've been there every year that it's run since. It didn't run this year of course in 2020 because of the whole COVID-19 situation but next year I probably will go there. And uh, they also used to open up the brewery once a month for a bar called Barsky but they now have their own bar in Helsingborg which goes by the same name. This opened back in 2018 and very recently it uh, celebrated its second anniversary. You can get a lot of Brewski beers in there that you aren't going to find in Sweden otherwise because they're still limited a bit by the whole system Bolaget system uh, but various other beers do go out to Denmark and Norway and things like this but if you go there you can also try some very nice ramen. It's not authentic Japanese ramen 
it's an American chef that's in there and he has his own kind of take on it with chicken and various other things but it is very nice and I would recommend that you check it out. They are also these days brewing some beer in the US at Tampa Bay Brewing Company in Florida and they're looking currently to open up a bar in Oslo in Norway as well and Marcus also has started a distribution company in Norway called Beerski which is taking various Swedish beers into Norway. I'm not sure if they are going into Vinmonopolet which is their kind of equivalent of Sistembolaga up there but uh, yeah he is just Distributing a number of Swedish breweries beers throughout Norway these days with beer ski. Um, but over 2019, they apparently produced around 500,000 litres of beer in total. And uh, as of August 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 300 different types of beer. And they're constantly releasing new beers. There's usually two or three from them released every month through the local Moska lead in Sistembolaga. And who knows how many other beers are going out to various corners of the world uh, because, yeah, Brewski do export quite heavily throughout Europe these days. I'm not sure if they have sent their beers over to Asia and things yet, but uh, I think that probably will be the natural progression there. But yeah, some of the Brewski beers, as I said, are being brewed kind of under license by uh, Tampa Bay Brewing Company in Florida, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Brewski Microbrewery for the moment. Um, these guys are a brewery that I would highly recommend if you're into your hazy IPAs, your kind of fruity IPAs, fruity sours as well. And these guys are also very capable when it comes to the kind of pastry stouts and imperial stouts side of thing but you don't see those as often as you see the other styles of beer. I would love the, for these guys to do a proper you know old school west coast IPA but I think that's something that probably um, isn't in the works for them. I've been saying that for a few years and they've never uh, unfortunately they've never done it. I don't think I've ever seen a lager beer from these guys. I think the most traditional they get actually is like a Hefeweizen I think that's the most traditional kind of style I've actually ever seen from these guys. So uh, yeah, it would be cool to see them do like a Pilsner Lager or something like that at some point. And you know, um, you know, a barley wine. I think, you know, to do a barley wine in some of the other different styles, like a West Coast IPA, I think it would be a very interesting thing for this brewery to have a go at. But uh, yeah, like I said, that's all I can really tell you about Brewski Microbrewery for the moment. A really, really nice Swedish brewery, and it's quite cool to have them so local to me here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. So uh, yeah, check them out for yourself. So yeah, check out the brewery website if you want to learn more about them. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then so i'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up there you can see the three different nipples on there uh i don't know is one of the i don't know is one of these meant to be like a white white nipple black nipple and then asian nipple i have no idea but yeah different kind of piercings and things on there it doesn't actually tell you on the cans what the the idea behind uh you know, behind these, uh, the names of the beers and stuff and the, the can art and things like that are. Ah, I wish Bruski would do that. I wish they would put like a little blog, a little blurb or something on the side of the beers just to tell, you know, this is the idea behind the name because they've never done that actually. They have never actually done that. But there you can see there's the little Bruski man on the bottom of the can, which is what you always look for. And there is the kind of name part of the beer. And they encourage you to go on Instagram and put the, um, the hashtag Bruski moment on Twitter and Instagram so yeah worth checking out that but yeah this one was a 330 milliliter can I think I paid either 45 or 50 Swedish kroners for this so about four euros 50 four American dollars 50 and uh, probably a bit more than that though because the dollar has dropped recently um, but yeah, about four pounds or something for this. So for a ten percent triple IPA, three thirty mil, I think four pounds is actually a fairly decent price. This one, but yeah, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting for this one. Very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. And as I say, only my second triple IPA that I've had from Brewski. This one's actually quite dark. Surprised at the colour of this one. Come to think of it. So, yeah, I wasn't expecting that, actually. What does it say with the ingredients of this one? It says, yeah, barley, wheat and oats. So, yeah, curious why this one is so dark. It doesn't say that it has any other fruits and things in it. And it didn't say on untapped either anything very much about this beer when I checked it out. So, um, yeah, if we shine the light through this beer, this one's actually a really dark, kind of murky... Um, I don't even know what kind of colour you would use to describe that. It's almost like a very, very kind of light, kind of brown colour, to be honest with you. So, yeah, one of the darker 
um, New England IPAs that I've come across from, from Brewski recently. It is definitely New England because it's got the wheat and the oats in it. Um, but yeah, they must be using a little bit of kind of caramel or something like that in here to uh, to give it this colour. The other option is that it has been, um, you know, the other option would be that it's been... Uh, it's gone through a longer boil actually, so not quite sure about it. But you can see there's a solid finger and a bit of a frothy, I would say kind of cream ivory coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But you know, overall, it does look pretty nice. As I say, one of the darker kind of hazy New England IPAs I've had recently. But I do suspect this one will have a little bit of caramel or, uh, you know, something like that in it to give it this colour. Either that or it's gone through a slightly longer boil than some of the other um, brewski beers that I've come across. So yeah, let's have a look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we get on. Oh yeah, this one's it definitely more more kind of caramelly and biscuity and things like that, definitely. It'll be that, that going from the aroma, yeah, more caramel and things in this one. So um, yeah, for me with this one, straight away you can smell a nice kind of smooth white bready character to this one. You get a lovely kind of smooth wheaty note out of it. You do get some of the kind of oaty creamy qualities to the beer as well. Um, yeah, this one is really nice actually. I like how it goes together. I do, you know, if you've watched the channel before, you will know that I'm a bit of a sucker for kind of big brown sugary sweet beers. It's the Scottish sweet tooth. Um, but yeah, you know, with this one, you really get a lovely kind of brown sugar and bready blend out of it. So yeah, lovely kind of smooth wheaty notes coming out of it. It's a little bit bitey, a little bit of a pale malty quality in there, some sweet caramel, a little bit of a kind of biscuity note, almost a little bit Werther's originally in some ways as well, but you can pick out just a little bit of oaty creaminess from this beer too, which is quite nice. So yeah, the aroma that you get out of this beer is pretty damn solid, I have to say. So yeah, in terms of the... Um, yeah, in terms of the, the kind of malty side of things, I think this one is on to a winner here. It's quite oily, it's quite sweet, and it has kind of everything uh, that I would want from a, from an IP like this. I do like the New Englands when they do have a little touch of brown sugar in them. I think they can always be uh, really interesting in that regard. But yeah, very smooth and bready, oaty creaminess in there, a bit of a bitey wheat, but then the brown sugary notes you get out of this, the mixture between that kind of Werther's originally and kind of straight up sweet caramel note in there is really nice. There is a wee touch of a biscuity, grainy quality to the beer as well. But yeah, this one gets a thumbs up from me in terms of uh, in terms of its aroma. So uh, yeah, I like how this one um, I like how this one goes together. It does actually smell a little bit. It smells really kind of jammy and quite boozy as well when you sugar the beer up but then when it's 10% and it's a triple IPA you should expect a little bit of that but uh, yeah in terms of the hoppy side of things then let's have a look at that um, so for me I want to say there might be a bit of mosaic in this one it's got a little bit of earthiness in there there is a bit of a kind of juicy orangey character coming out of this beer um, you've got some nice floral notes to the beer but I think the green side of the hops really leans more towards the grassy side of things it's quite smooth in terms of the earthiness and the grassiness there's only a little bit of a kind of floral character coming out of this beer but um, yeah I really like I do like how that um, how it goes together in this one so yeah, it really does. The more and more I smell this, the more of the boozy kind of malty characters I get out of the beer. In terms of the fruity side of things, then it actually comes across as quite like jammy and sultana like, I think. Um, yeah, it is quite, it really is quite jammy and almost sultana like. There is a bit of a pear apple kind of thing to this one, but you've got juicy oranges as well. But then the tropical fruits kind of come in on top of that. There's a bit of a white grape, you know, a bit of a, I do find a little bit of a kind of, uh, peri ester, like white, you know, white green grapes, a little bit of peri ester, some oranges in there. But there is a bit of, you know, the tropical fruit, like the pineapple as well. I do get a nice bit of a brighter pineapple to it, and I also get. Yeah, there is a wee bit of like a sort of mangoey passion fruit you note know, there, but I think that takes a back seat. I think this one is quite kind of pineapple-y. I also find it quite orangey, but I'm getting a good bit of like, you know, gooseberry white green grapey notes out of this one as well and um, that's really interesting I'm not sure what hops would have been used in this one to be honest but it's definitely not the most tropical of um, of IPAs that you're going to come across from uh, from Brewski right enough it's definitely a little bit more kind of malty and kind of grapey and stuff like that as well so I do like how um, 
how all of this goes together and this one it gets a thumbs up from me in terms of its aroma I'm very very curious to see what this uh, what this one has in store for us so take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it I think this is going to be a really really interesting beer for us to try so yeah this one is the triple nipple uh, triple IPA coming in at 10% ABV from Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg in Skåne here in the very south of Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange Skål. All oh, right, okay. That's not quite what I expected from this one. This is a big, very, very smooth, very oily beer. Oh yeah, this is this is really different actually to what I've had from uh, from Brewski before. This is really really very very sweet actually. It's not got much in the way of kind of hoppy bitterness and things to it. It does have hoppy fruitiness, but it's got a lot of kind of oily brown sugar to it. Come to think of it, this is very different to what I've had from Brewski before. So you know, kudos to them for trying something a little bit different. Um, I will say I like this beer. I do like it. Um, the flavours that it's got in it, the way the brown sugars come out, the way it has these lighter kind of tropical, these lighter tropical notes and a bit of, you know, kind of jammy fruits and things in it. I do like that, but it doesn't have, it really does not have much of a hoppy character. And you know, if you know this brewery, that's very unusual. Actually, it really is very, very unusual in that sense. It almost comes across as if it's supposed to be like a kind of pastry IPA or something like that. This is very, very sweet, to be honest with you. I mean, where do we even start with this beer? Where do we start with it? So, um, yeah, and I mean, this is really unusual, like I say. I don't think there's, just j just to kind of err on the side of caution, I did wonder when this beer poured, I was like, all oh, right, okay, because this is a kind of colour that you can sometimes get when there's like a little bit of um, of oxidation and things like this and just having a little quick look on uh, you know an untapped if we stick this in let's just have a little look um, I'm pretty sure this one it's um you know this one it is absolutely fine I don't think there's anything wrong with this beer because that was really honestly when I had this one I did wonder from the uh, the colour and things like that because you know I was like is this oxidised or something like this but um, no I don't I really don't think it is. Hmm. So yeah, it says on here yeah if I look at the pictures of this one on uh, Untapped, if I go through the pictures here yeah everyone else's pictures are. Uh, are kind of quite a little bit darker than this, so are a little bit dark like this one is. So yeah, it's this. That's a say. I did wonder about that. You know, maybe have the hops dropped out of it or something like this. But no, it is just something a little bit different. It really is more like a kind of pastry. Um, it's more like a kind of pastry IPA or something like that. Not sure what to make of this one, but I do. I like the flavour combination here. It is like a really malty leaning New England IPA. So yeah, just be aware of that. If you do buy this one, you are in for something that's a little bit different. So yeah, let's try and break the flavour of this one down then. But straight away with this beer, um, you can feel that sort of smooth, white bready, wheaty quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. If you go towards the back third of your tongue, it does get a little bit thicker. There's a wee touch of a kind of bitey graininess comes out of it as you go further into the aftertaste. But then as you move into the kind of... Uh, middle third of your tongue, you can feel as you go towards the front half of that middle third of your tongue, big, thick, oaty creaminess out of this one. But behind that, um, you do have, it's almost like you've got thick oats, thick wheat, and then in the middle, you've got like a thick kind of brown sugary note out of this one. So there's sweet caramel in there. There's that sort of more oily Werther's originally type flavour. There's one or two little McVitie's digestive biscuit kind of grains coming out of it as well. Um, and yeah, it's really the middle of your palate in this one, the whole malty side of the beer is very, very thick. There's maybe one or two little slightly woody undertones to the beer, which is quite interesting. But it's just the level of oiliness and thickness and things like that that are coming out of the, the brown sugary side of this beer that are really kind of surprising and, and uh, you know unusual, I think, for 
what Brewski do. Um, in fairness, you know, I've kind of assumed that it's a New England IPA. It's maybe not meant to be like that. It's maybe meant to be some kind of hybrid between the two. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of the sweetest hazy IPAs that I've kind of come across in, uh, from, uh, from Brewski before. So yeah, I do like how this one, um, I do kind of like how it how it pieces together actually, I mean the the flavour out of this one, it is really nice, I like the big kind of brown sugary beers like this, so the malt base for me is really nicely done, but as I said it just was not what I expected from this beer at all. So um, yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, in the back corners of the palate you do get a little touch of earthiness, as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue it does gradually develop a little bit of a kind of floral aromaticity, but really not a lot actually, um, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, as you go round the front curve of the palate, the beer is just a little bit lighter and more grassy. Then behind the front curve of the tongue, you've got that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters kind of push their way out of the beer. And this one has quite an oily, fruity character to it as well. So um, yeah. So yeah, I do like, um, I really like how the, 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 this is one of these, it's a really big oily beer generally speaking, and I think everything kind of fits together in that um, sort of context if you like. So yeah, on the front third of your palate, as I say, where you get that big oily bubble, if you go towards the back of it, you've got a nice little bit of, of a kind of passion fruity note coming out of it. You've got um, a little bit more of a kind of mango quality in there. Um, and you've also, you've got a little bit of a mango note to it, a little bit of pineapple, but then you've got a nice kind of oily tangerine orangey note coming out of the, um, you've got a nice kind of oily tangerine note coming out of the, on the very kind of front tip of your tongue as well. Um, so, um, the, it, it gets more and more oily the more you drink of it actually, but yeah, the oily flavours that this beer has, generally speaking, all merge together very, very well. It's a very kind of straight shooting beer in a lot of ways, um, you know, very big and smooth and brown sugary, um, but yeah, definitely not what I would have expected compared to the last um, triple IPA that I had from, uh, from Brewski. I do remember the triple threat being very, very oaty and smooth and creamy rather than being kind of brown sugary, so maybe that's why they've gone down a slightly different route with this one to be honest with you. So this one does, it almost has the same uh, it almost has the same kind of sweetness vibe if you like that you get from um, you know the pie series and the cake series and things like that. It almost strikes me in some ways as being a little bit of a kind of pastry type uh, New England uh, triple IPA to be honest with you. I, I don't know if I'm, I might be completely off the mark in saying that but that's just my opinion of it. It almost has a bit of that kind of this kind of pastry vibe thing that's going around a lot of breweries at the moment. So uh, yeah, bear that in mind when you uh, when you try this one. Um, yeah, very, very sweet IPA. But yeah, a little bit of passion fruit at the back of the, the front third of your tongue there, a little bit of mango going in front of that, pineapples uh, in front of that, and then just a wee bit of a kind of tangerine orange on the tip of the tongue. There is a bit of light grassiness on the edge of the palate, but I think um, this that kind of is the flavour described quite concisely, to be honest with you. Um, in terms of the... Um, the mouthfeel of this one, I'd say this is quite, it's not the thickest of triple IPAs that I've come across, um, but in fairness when it comes to the New England you do expect a big creaminess, I find this one very very oily for the New England side of IPAs, you know, you'd normally expect this level of oiliness from maybe a West Coaster rather than a New England, you'd expect a bit more creaminess out of a, a New England, um, but yeah, nice smoothness to the, there is a nice level of smoothness to the um, to the malt base in this one, a little bit of a kind of sweetness in my mind as well, as I say, kind of big and oily and sweet, the mouthfeel overall I think really is very oily and very smooth in this one rather than anything else. Uh, in terms of hoppy bitterness, I think you'd be lucky to get about 20 um, IBUs out of this one if you're lucky and the fruitiness again is very very oily in this one as well. So yeah this has been a really quite quirky beer from Brewski. Would I say this is the best IPA that they've done? Um, probably not in fairness. I think you know I think in terms of the triple IPAs I probably did prefer the triple threat. You know if they'd gone all out and made this like a, a proper kind of west coaster rather than smoothening out with the oats and the wheat and things like that I think they might have been on to 
a bit of a winner with this one, but then again, it's very low in terms of its bitterness. So I don't know. This one, it, it does in a way, it's a nice beer and it's nice to drink. Um, and, you know, I've, I'm kind of contradicting myself with things that I've said before on the channel. You know, in some ways, this beer seems a little bit confused for me. Um, it's nice, but the main the main question should be: Is it a, is it a nice beer and is it nice to drink? Yes, it is, but it seems a little bit confused in terms of exactly what direction it's going in. I think that's a fair statement to uh, to make about this one. It seems as if it's kind of trying to straddle the line between having the West Coast sweetness and the oily fruitiness that you'd expect, and the kind of New England kind of smoothness and things like that. It seems as if it's just a bit confused into what exactly it wants to be. But uh, yeah, as a beer itself, it is nice. As a, a 330 milliliter can is maybe a bit much for this one. You know, I'd be quite happy to have this one in like a little tasting flight or something like that. That's the other thing I would say about this beer. But yeah, pretty full bodied, smooth carbonation, big oily mouthfeel to this one. 20 IBUs if you're lucky. I think it might even be like about 15 or something. It's got kind of a Hefeweizen level. Um, IBU vibe about it, but yeah, smooth malt base, big and oily and sweet at the same time, and nice oily juicy fruits as well. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Triple Nipple, uh, Triple IPA, coming in at 10% ABV from Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg in Skåne here in the very south of Sweden. Another nice enough beer this one, but I think not the best within the IPA category that I've had from these guys, and uh, I think the, the Bellina Vices that I've had this month have kind of outshone this particular one, to be honest with you. But yeah, still, enjoy. I enjoy trying different things from these beers. Kudos to them for trying something a little bit different. As I say, I'd love to see these guys do a proper old school West Coast IPA. You know, I think that would be a really interesting thing for Brewski to do. I'd love to see them try a few more different styles because, yeah, mainly it's Berliner Weisses, New England Hazies, and, uh, you know, fruit IPAs and things like that that Brewski do. I'd love to see these guys branch out a little bit more. And in fairness, they have with the kind of pastry stouts and stuff recently. But I'd love to see them, you know, do some laggers, do some West Coast IPAs. A black IPA from Brewski would be a really interesting one as well, I think. So, um, yeah, let's leave it at that once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from brewski microbrewery as well and uh, i hope you've enjoyed this one you will definitely see more reviews from these guys in the near future there is another Bellina Vice to come from august 2020 so keep your eye out for that and check out my other reviews from these guys i always review the beers from brewski very regularly until the next time slanger just now and i'll catch you guys later slanger skull cheers